Hello guys and welcome <coughs> to this video of what will happen in FM 2017 predictions. Um, so basically this series is going to be just looking at uh, what's going to what, what FM predicts is going to happen across the um, football manager. So what teams will do well, um, what teams won't do so well. So you see that uh, less than an hour ago I opened it. Um, I've literally just opened up. The, I've just made the new uh, thing. It's just going to load in here. Um, and this is the new football manager. So if I go to the Premier League, it's Premier Division. Current holders Leicester, so Arsenal, Bournemouth, Burnley, Chelsea, Crystal Palace, Everton, Hull, Liv uh, Leicester, Liverpool, Man City, Manchester United, Middlesbrough. Southampton, Stoke, Sunderland, Swansea, Tottenham, Watford, West Brom and West Ham in the Premier Division. Um, the currently rated the third best division behind Germany and Spain. Um, Syria in fourth. Portuguese league now above the French league, which is which is interesting. Um, and that's interesting as well. I'd, I'd hold the Eredivisie higher than the Belgian league, perhaps. So as you can see from 1996, you got Man United. Arsenal, Man United, Man United, Man United. Three, in a row, three years in a row is pretty impressive. Um, Arsenal 2001, Man United. I think that was the Arsenal Invincible season 2003, 2004. Um, stages, overall. You can't go back to the past season. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go on holiday and skip right to the end of the season. Um, and I'll be back to look at um just just to look at um what happens during the season so we're going to skip to that go on holiday and I'll see you guys in a second when I've finished um getting to that hello guys and I'm back and I have simulated the season as you can see on the 1st of June 2017 on Thursday at midnight um, <coughs> so what we do first is we will look at the Premier League table, and Arsenal won the league um, by three points ahead of City. Mad goal difference. Uh, obviously, Man City in second, uh, quite a distance. So it was really these two fighting for it. Uh, what happened in the last game of the season? Was it down to the last game of the season? Man City beat Stoke three-one, and Arsenal beat Leicester three-one. <laughs> Man United and Chelsea um, comfortably third and fourth, um, but Chelsea just couldn't get to that third spot ahead of United. Tottenham in fifth, um, Stoke sixth. That's quite impressive to be fair for Stoke. Um, they've done very well to to get that high really. Um, Southampton in seventh. It's quite good for Southampton. I suppose that's about average now. West Ham in eighth. Um, about about average again. Liverpool in ninth. Um, obviously, with with the players that they have, Daniel Klein. Will he go to positions? Carrius, um, John Matip, Sacco, L Lovren. They haven't really looked like they've sold anyone. Firmino's there. Henderson's there. Chan's there. Gurijic is there. Mane, Wijnaldum, Coutinho, Divock Origi, Sturridge. Shark storage is injured. Um, they don't really look like they've sold anyone, Liverpool, so I don't know why they would have finished that low. Bournemouth in 10th, which would be a fantastic season for them. Again, Burnley in 11th, which again would be a very good season for them. Watford in 12th, I think they take that. Everton in 13th, now, I don't think that will happen personally. Um, let's look at their managers. Oh, they sacked Ronald Koeman after 23 days. He won 11, drew, lost 12, and drew 4. They then brought in David Unsworth, who won one and drew one, and then brought in Sam Allardyce to finish off the season. So he had a 37% win ratio, and Ronald Koeman actually had a better win ratio than him. Perhaps was the wrong decision. Uh, West Brom, I'd imagine under Tony Pulis. Yeah, Tony Pulis, still in there. Um, Crystal Palace. Sven Goran Eriksson. That means they sacked Alan Pardew. Uh, landmarks, managers. Yeah, Alan Pardew. Just a 25% win ratio. 
Keith Millen coming with the same as Fengor and Erickson to 39, so that is a big improvement. Um, Leicester finishing 16th, back to reality really for Leicester. And Middlesbrough just finishing outside the relegations of my four points. Um, Swansea to go down. I mean, you could you could see that Sunderland this season definitely you could um, you could see going down and Hull 100% you can see going down the way their season started. Um, player stats: the top scorer was Aguero uh, by two by Harry Kane, joint Harry Kane with actually um, Troy Deeney, which is which is interesting. Um, Zlatan Ibrahimovic and Sal Rondon, Salomon Rondon in in four, in uh, joint fourth spot, which is interesting. And that's um, these two here are probably a big reason why uh, Arsenal finished top top of the league. Sanchez and, and Giroud between them got what 30, 34 goals between them, I think. Giroud only 24 appearances as well, which isn't bad. Um, done all right. Who else was in there? Jamie Vardy finishing in the top. What's that? Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, in the top eight. Uh, Meza Özil, obviously still a standard, really finishing the high. And Arsenal also getting Ramsey in there on 11, which is again why they probably did so well. Kevin De Bruyne, um, 14 assists. That's not really too much of a shock. Great player. Paul Pogba on 10. Max Gradle on on 9. That's probably why um, Bournemouth finished around about 10th. I think it's 10th spot. Seth Fabregas on 9. Gilfy Sigurdsson on 9. But Swansea went down and Christian Eriksen on 8. Um, oh, go okay, back. Distance covered. That's been quite a can take that. Doesn't shock me at all. Jordan Henderson, again, didn't shock me. Yeah, all of those players. Other than Valeron Beharami. None of those players really shot me. I'm su not surprised about Shane Long, Sanchez, Vardy, Henderson, George Boyd, Kante. And I'm I'm supposed to be a bit surprised about Aspilicueta, but Kante, Boyd, Henderson, Vardy, Sanchez, and Shane Long always um, up there for for distance covered. Again, Lauren Koscielny, top of the uh, top of the league in terms of key tackles. That's one of the reasons again why Arsenal would have finished the high as as well as. Callum Chambers, someone from Arsenal, on loan at uh, Middlesbrough, quite high up there. Scott Dan, Ashley Williams, um, in eighth. Lee Golf's conceded. There you go. That's why Petr Cech being able to keep the most most clean sheets as well. Yeah, most clean sheets and least conceded. Um, followed by Courtois, Fraser Forster, Hugo Lloris, and Simon Mignolet. Simon Mignolet in there as well. Considering the season that they've had, it's not supposed too bad. De Gea also had 13 clean sheets, but that United defence just seemed to let him down with the goals conceded. Kasper Schmeichel also up there. Best to hit on the target, Sadio Mane is in there. Josh King. Um, you'd expect these two to sort of be in there considering their goals that they scored last season. Vardy. Coutinho is also up there, which is surprising. Um, and Yannick Balassi. Not two players there that are really renowned for their clinical or ability to hit the target that often. Obviously, Ozil with the key pass is doubling, almost doubling what De Bruyne had. That's just ridiculous. Um, in about the same amount of appearances as well. So, Gilfie Sigurdsson, like, quite hard there as well, to be fair. Jordi Classy. And, and you think Swansea got relegated and Gilfie Sigurdsson had this fantastic season. Um, Sergio Aguero, uh, top of the most dribbles, which, again, you'd come to expect considering that his top player, Felipe Coutinho, on three, Hazard in second, Sanchez in fourth, again helping, and um, Ozil in seventh, helping Arsenal to that title. Mark Darun, the new player for, for um, Middlesbrough, who they signed in the summer. Uh, Koscielny again, that's just helping um, Arsenal to that title. Lucas Leiva, surprised he played that many games, to be fair. Nacho and N'Golo Kante. Most clean sheets, Petr Cech, David Heyer, Fraser Forster. Yeah, sort of ones you'd expect really other than Tom Heaton, but Burnley had a good season, I think, in the, in, in that. Um Jake Livermore was, the, was one of or Jake Livermore, Troy Deeney, Sam Cor Lucas and David De Gea were f one of four they were four they were the only four players to make a, the appearances in every single game for their team in the premiership. Um, player of the matches. So Meza Özil finished with 13 players of the matches. That's 
four ahead of Callum Chambers. That's ridiculous. That's mental. For that's exactly why they they finish up the league. Thirty man of the matches. It's just incredible. Guilfi Sigurdsson with four. That's, uh, Aaron Ramsey with four as well. So you think they've got seventeen player of the matches between them? The two Arsenal players. Like that's why they finish up high up the league. Pablo Zabalet with five. Um, mm, I want to see the highest rated. You can see the goalkeeping, defending, attacking. Cross completion, Sadio Mane. That's surprising because Liverpool don't tend to cross general. So we want to be on general. Appearances, games won, games lost, yellow cards, red cards, player of the matches, distance cover. Oh, average rating, there we go. So Meza Ozil hit an 8.6. 8.06, sorry. Which is crazy. Playing 37 of Arsenal's 38 games. Laurent Koscielny on a 7.66. Just trying to look for it. Sergio Aguero on a 7.74. Broy on a 7.65. Uh, Aaron Ramsey on a 7.43. Nacho Moreira on a 7.51. Sanchez on a 7.53. So yeah, obviously Arsenal dominating um, dominating that really um, we'll quickly go look at the FA Cup and see how they who won the English FA Cup so the holders are Tottenham and they beat Newcastle in the final so we will go back to the third round one of the Premier League teams actually we'll go, we'll go fourth round um, Tottenham Villa, Arsenal, Crystal Palace, Watford, QPR, Everton, Newcastle, Man United after a replay. Sunderland, Leicester, Hull, Preston, Brentford and Liverpool go through to the fifth round. Everton, Villa, QPR, Brentford, Newcastle, Tottenham knocked out Man United, Liverpool and Arsenal. To the sixth round, QPR, Tottenham, Tottenham knocked them out. Everton, Villa, the one on penalties, Everton. Newcastle, Arsenal and Liverpool, Brentford, Liverpool had the easiest tie there. And one it to now, obviously. Semis. Liverpool knocked out 4 1 by Newcastle. Demolished. Daniel Sturridge played, but 23 condition. He must have got injured that game then. Yeah, he did. Central foot injury. And Everton just getting past. Uh, Tottenham just getting past Everton and then beating them 1 0. I wonder where the goal was. 60th minute, and then old Viral got sent off 10 minutes later. Pretty, pretty mental. So the English Football League in the EFL, EFL Cup. Yeah, hold a Stoke. Stoke beat Arsenal in the final. Um, I think if you asked an Arsenal fan what they wanted to do with that, they'd be more than happy to um, to take to take that. Just gonna try and. See where I'm. I'm a Liverpool fan, so I want to kind of know <coughs> where it went wrong. So they beat Tottenham, Liverpool. They're not talking about Brighton. Bloody hell! Two goals from Tom a a Hemed. They did start a very young team, in all in all fairness to them, but still not really good enough. Candanda, right back, Cam, centre back, centre back. No, he's a striker. Sorry. Cam, centre back. Not sure where he plays. I think he's a centre mid or a striker. Centre mid and a striker. I imagine he's probably a goalkeeper. He's a left back. Liam Coyle. Who are they playing goal then? Oh, maybe him. Yeah, goalkeeper. Camille Gab Garaba. So, yeah, Liverpool. Obviously. Oh, it's frozen a little bit. There you go. So we're going to the Premiership and I'm going to see what went right for Arsenal. Did they keep their manager? They have still got Arsene Wenger. Man City, put Guardiola still. Man United, still kept Jose Mourinho. Chelsea, they sacked Conte. They sacked Conte after having a 51% ratio. 11 draws and 8 losses and he finished with 4... Oh, he finished very late. Um... 100% win ratio for Steve Holland, and he kind of won the rest of the last four games of the season. I imagine they would probably have needed that to stay up, to stay in that that position. 
Tottenham finish with Mauricio Pochettino. I think on the grand scheme of things, if Tottenham were to finish there, I mean, it would be disappointing for them, but that wouldn't be too bad considering how competitive it will be this season. But they are they have started very well. Um, currently, it, the date today is the 28th of February, 28th of October. So, um, Claude Pell still in charge. That'd be a good season for Southampton. West Ham. This would be a fantastic season for West Ham if they manage to finish in eighth. Liverpool lost or sacked? Did they sack? They sacked. Um, the Odin Klopp after seven, after four, uh, what, 14, it's 20 games, he'd won seven, drawn seven, lost six games. Brought in Michael Beale, who I believe is the assi was the old assistant or is the assistant. Uh, he went back to the um, 23. I wasn't sure, I know, I've heard that name before. But um, yeah, he come in, drew one, one, two. Oh. Uh, and Marcelo. Belisa come in and didn't really do too much better than Klopp. Where was he last? Olympic Marseille, Athletic Bilbao, Chile, Argentina. He's been about this guy. He's done all right. Um, so Liverpool, obviously the first club we've seen that have sacked the manager. Other than Chelsea, sorry. Bournemouth, did they keep Eddie Howe? Yep, of course they kept Eddie Howe. Great manager. Burnley, Sean Dice still there. Watford, Watford, Mazzari is still there. Everton, Sam Allardyce now the manager. After sacking uh, Ronald Koeman, we checked that up earlier. T uh, Tony Pulis, the West Brom, Crystal Palace did sack. We already checked that as well. Did they sack? Renieri is still there. I talk Aranka, still at thingy Swansea. Ah, there you go. So they are currently managerless, obviously, after sacking... They sacked Bobby Brady. Uh, sorry, Bobby Bradley brought in... He lost all three of his games as a caretaker manager. And then they sacked Di Matteo after just a 10% win ratio. So they'd have been better just in with uh, Bobby Bradley, really. Um, Sunderland, their manager. Manuel Pellegrini took that job. Bloody hell. David Moyes got sacked after 20 games loss. Six draws and thingy wins. They bought Manuel Pellegrini just a bit too late, really. Two games won. Um, just a slightly better win ratio than David Moyes. Uh, maybe left him a bit too much to do in Hull. I'd imagine that I have not sacked my feeling. Um, which is interesting. 26 games lost, 24% win ratio, but couldn't keep them out of the drop. Um, which, <coughs> yeah, I, I suppose that's, that's interesting. I'm going to quickly check the Spain first division. Spain uh, what is it, Liga BVA oh I just screenshot uh, Spanish Spanish first division, so Atletico Madrid won the league, very comfortably actually by 6 points in the end Barcelona, Real Madrid 2nd and 3rd that's interesting. I wonder if Barcelona still have Luis Enrique there. They don't. They've actually got a job opening. I could apply for Barcelona if I want to. And Real Madrid, I'd imagine, have the same. No, they kept Zidane. Um, Diego Simeone still there. Who's Valencia manager now? I don't even know who that is. Fair. Did alright though. Athletic Comedy Madrid. Only six losses in the season. Didn't even lose to um, to Barcelona or Real Madrid. They beat Barcelona and Real Madrid every single game. They lost to Atletico twice. Lost to Atletico. Real Madrid only had four and two of their losses were to Atletico Madrid. That's why they won the league, because they just went tap to tap on one thing. We've got to look at the German first division as well. Obviously Bayern. Um, the holders of the, of, the, of the league. Dortmund. Oh, Bayern the league. But Dortmund in second, only just. Leverkusen in third. And Borussia Mönchengladbach in fourth, quite comfortably really. Um, Wolfsburg in fifth. I think that's a Euro Europa League spot. Um, Lewandowski with, with 20 plus goals. Andre Han, I'd imagine he would be um, very sought after this season, after the season he just had. And Kevin Volland. 
again, defensive forwards. That seems to be a big thing in this league. Two of the three top scorers of defensive forwards. So perhaps that worked very well on this game, or it just worked very well in the German league. I'm not sure. Um, I haven't really dived into it too much. So we'll go look at the Italian first division. Syria. What's it called? Yeah, I just searched Syria. Why is it not coming up? Oh, it's E. I've never known that. Honestly, I've never known that. Juventus win the win the cup. Pa Pablo Dybala and Gonzalo Higuain hitting 51 goals between them. Mental. And the closest to them on goals was 13, and that was Andre Boletti, who finished with Torino, and they only just finished 15th. That is crazy. 51 goals between a pair of forwards that... Mm, would they have played every game? Would they have played two forwards, do you reckon? All season? Oh, bloody hell. That's, that is incredible. Uh, appearances. Appearances. So we'll go look at... Could we go, uh, go to the Juventus side then. And we'll look at players <coughs> and appearances. They played so many games. They must have played two up front. That's incredible. To hit 51 goals between your striker partner. That is ridiculous. That's why they, they won that they won that league. If they didn't have one of those two playing, you think they're down 25 goals minimum? Which would drop them. And they'd probably have lost so many more games. I mean, obviously that's just all swings and roundabouts. But for, look at that. That is ridiculous. One, two, three, four, five, six seasons. And Juventus haven't lost a game. And Juventus haven't lost a title for six seasons now. After AC Milan, Inter dominated for five seasons. AC to Juventus, Roma, Lazio are up there. Juventus have won how many since? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten league titles. That is crazy. Ten league titles in what? Twenty years. Yeah, so they've won, out of the last 20 years, they've won half of their season in the league title. Mental. So guys, what I'm going to do, that, look at how dumb that manager looks. That's meant to be me. Look at his eyes. He has the weebiest eyes. I don't even know what that is. Why is my lips like that as well? What is happening in that picture? And that jawline. Look at that jawline compared to this side. Just nothing. Massive jaw. How dumb. Well done. But yeah, anyway guys, that's going to be the end of the episode. Um, I hope you enjoyed just looking at that and seeing what what um, what came of it and, and how it happened. Um, got a new manager as well. Managers. He joined on the 7th or the 16th. He's won all seven games of England for the, uh, for the World Cup European qualifying. Um... Wayne Rooney's top, a top player, apparently. For, for, uh, I wonder who they're. God, that's poor, though, really, isn't it? When you think about England and what they used to be, it is poor. You can't help but, but be disappointed at that, really. So they beat Malta 2 0, Russia 1 0, Slovakia 3 0, Slovenia 3 0, Lithuania 3 0, Austria 2 1. And most recently beat Malta 4 0 in the group stage. Um, which they did all right, I suppose. Not too bad. So the yeah, the England England senior team's doing okay as well. Seems to be under okay management. Insecure jobs. Look at that. Portsmouth, Sheffield Wednesday. So Real Madrid and Leicester are the two biggest ones really there. Job centre Barcelona. <laughs> if you fancy your chances, Bologna, um, Swansea. Going to the Sky Bet Championship next season. So yeah, it's um, it's interesting. I'd like to see. Last thing we'd like to see is I don't have to look at this actually. 
transfers. Sorry, you can look at transfers on this. World. Browser. Transfers. Um, all transfers. Could be right. So we're to January. So we'll see. We'll go to fees so are the highest paid. So Man, Man City bought Gabriel Jesus. Who I think they'd already bought. I swear they'd already bought him. Maybe not, maybe they did. Uh, Mario Riccardi moved to Tottenham from Inter Milan for 22 point or 21 million, rising to 33. Ben Davis went to Liverpool. Um, Stefan Jovetic went to Inter on a permanent. Mario Mandzukic went to Chelsea. Um, Sylvan Widmer, I've never heard of him. Never heard of him. Jamal Lascelles went to Leicester. Danilo, Kieran Trippier, De Frey, Sacco. Went to Southampton for six to rise into eight. Um, just gets sort of poorer and poorer. So we'll go to Spain. Look at their transfers history. Transfers. Go to January. Um, who bought in? What are they? Okay. So only Atletico Madrid. They sold Frederick Carrasco. Or was that Monaco before? Wasn't he? He was. Yeah, he was at Monaco, Monaco before. So that Monaco bought him back. From Atletico Madrid. Um, for for eight point two five million, I swear he'd move for more than that. So they signed him for eleven mil, and then they sold him back for eight point two five. That's poor businessman, if you if you ask me. Uh, Danilo obviously went to Chelsea. Man City um, sold Ruli. Oh, I'm, I know him. I signed him on my my other career mode. Um, yeah, not really any two big deals going down there. Southampton sold Simonovic, good player. Um, Livy, Liv Livy, fold nine, went to, to thingy. And we'll quickly look at Germany as the final one just to see if Bayern Munich. Oh, we'll look at um, the uh, the other, what's it called, sorry, the Italian league as well. So Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg, Monaco, Leverkusen. Not really any big names I can see in there. Note seems to be quite quiet. And the Italian leagues, Mauro Riccardi, obviously been the biggest. Mario Mandzukic, Stefan Jovetic, Luan. I've heard of him. Um, yeah, he used to play in Brazil, and he went to Juventus. Not a bad player. Uh, I wouldn't play him false nine. I'd personally play him probably. Yeah, as an inside forward, that left hand side, he's right footed. Yeah, prefer for right so you can cut inside. Um but that long shots are quite poor. Um so maybe, maybe not, maybe. Just Jurit Hendricks, I believe he's quite a decent player actually. In the um that league. Um I don't know who this is. I honestly have no idea who that is, but he's got some great stats. Eighteen tackling, sixteen heading, eighteen determination. Um yeah, no one's really lost any huge players. I mean, he's he is decent, but no one's really lost any huge, huge players um, to any clubs. Or, or I mean, obviously, Icardi and Manzuka are big players, but um, I was hoping we'd see like a Bale or or someone in there transferring. Maybe League uh, League uh, They might have made some big transfers considering that um, PSG are in there. Just for, for, um, Carrasco is the highest, highest, and they signed three players. Kovic. Obviously, the holders are the standard, um, sort of. Well, it's a standard PSG, Monaco, and they and they tore the league really. But that is surprising. So, Bas SC Bastia to get in there above Le Olympic Leones. Um Marseille having a poor season, obviously. I wonder if they lost or they sacked their manager. Oh, they sacked him. For four years at the club, they sacked him. It's a bit out of order, really, if you ask me. But yeah, that's going to be the end of the episode, guys. Um, 
if you did enjoy it, please make sure you like and subscribe. I'm going to be uploading um, each season, so season 1, season 2, season 3, season 4, season 5. And then after season 5, I'm going to go straight to season 10, and then to season 20, uh, season 20, uh, sorry, 15, 20, 25. And then after 25, I'm just going to go straight to 100, um, and then we will see from there um, what the hun last 100 years have been like, so from 2016, 70 season to 2000. 116-17 season and see what's happened um, through the Premiership and what's happened with players and, and managers and who became a manager and who who did what at what clubs. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. This is the first episode of what a couple of well, I don't know one two three four five six seven eight about a ten episodes a ten, a ten series episode. So if you did enjoy it, please make sure you like and subscribe to see more. And I'll see you guys next time. Adios.